In this tutorial, I'm going to show you 11 ways to using Google Maps 3D for level design and game environment ideas, top down layouts and reference. So a couple of days ago before doing this tutorial, I must have spent more than half a working day in Google Maps 3D. I never really used Google Maps 3D feature or the street view that much for level design or game environment art. I did once in a while, but not the way I'm about to show you. So let's go ahead and get started. And here are the 11 ways to using Google Maps 3D feature and Street View to get more ideas, to collect reference and top down layouts. Number one, here's how to access Google 3D. First, go to google.com slash maps, or you can type in maps.google.com you can either search for a specific city you want to go into or just pick something random. So I'm going to go ahead and zoom in to New Orleans. Then you want to switch over to satellite and click on 3D. You will begin to load. Let's go ahead, continue zooming in. And the closer you get, the more detail you will begin to see. You are now in 3D mode. Number two is navigation. Navigating around 3D is very simple. Left click, hold and drag to move the camera around and mouse wheel forward and back to zoom in and to zoom out. Now there's one shortcut key that was very helpful that I didn't know about. If you press and hold shift and then left click, hold and drag this will rotate the camera around. So this allows you to quickly move around and if you want to take a look at the area better, just rotate around it by holding down shift. The other few shortcut keys are if you press and hold left or the right arrow key, this will rotate you more smoothly around an area. And if you press forward or back arrow keys, this will fly you over an area so you can take a look at the map without having to use the left mouse button constantly. And last, you can use plus or minus on the keyboard to zoom in and to zoom out. Number three is dropping in and out of street view. Now, one of the best ways I found to explore locations quickly is as you move around in 3D view and you see something that you like and you want to take a closer look at it, position your mouse over the road and begin to zoom in by using the mouse wheel. Move forward until you see this circle pop up. This tells you that if you continue zooming in, scrolling the mouse wheel forward, you will drop in into street view. And then here you can take a look at the area, see if it's something that you like. Take a look at the detail, architecture, the location itself. And then you can simply drop back out into 3D view by zooming out using the mouse wheel back. And then continue exploring. Then you, if you see something again that you like, mouse wheel forward, drop in, take a look, and quickly drop back out. You can also of course use this little guy, this character right here, left click, hold and drag, and just drop him over a street. This will do the same thing. And last, sometimes when I would just move around quickly, and rotate and just take a look at the area. Sometimes I wasn't able to zoom in and that little circle wouldn't pop up. So in order to fix this, if you experience that, just simply click on 2D view, so it pops you into top down, and then continue to zoom in into the street view, and that will work. So that's just something that happened a few times to me where I wasn't able to drop into street view using the mouse wheel. So by switching over to 2D and then dropping into street view, fix the issue. Now we're going to get into the cool stuff. Generating ideas, gathering reference, top down layouts, researching locations, and getting ideas for style and design variation. So number four is game environment reference. Great use for Google Maps 3D and Street View is to collect game environment R reference, such as specific buildings, architecture style, architecture detail, prop placement, surrounding nature, such as trees, mountains, landscapes. So once you discover a cool location, go ahead and drop into Street View. And here you have all the reference you ever need to create this. 
you have all the information for architecture, architecture detail, what type of textures you'll need, and you won't have to guess how this building fits within the larger part of the world. And if you don't like it, you can scroll over to the next building and just maybe focus on a specific section. And here you have everything you need to recreate this. Here's another reference of an abandoned city shop. And this reference contains all the architecture detail, material surface property, even prop placement. There's a lot of richness and history in this reference. And if you don't like this view, or you want to see what this building looks like from the side, you can just go over here and grab the reference from here. In addition to architecture, you can collect nature reference, such as trees, bushes, flowers, landscapes, depending on the area that you are collecting reference from. So in this case, this is Florida. So you will obviously have palm trees. And this type of reference will let you know what type of foliage you'll need to create and how to place it within the world. Another type of reference to collect is prop placement. This will help you to accurately and more realistically position your props within the game environment that references a real world location and its culture. So you will never have to place your props from your head generically ever again. Number five, ideas for level design locations and setting. Level design location and setting is a single section of an environment that can be used as a starting point for an entire level. So when you are in 3D view and you find something really cool, something very interesting, this can be used as a setting for a level or you can zoom into a specific section and say you only like this specific area, which then can be used as a starting point to base your entire map around. Here's another location I found. So this can be used as an idea for an entire level, or maybe I just like this specific building and the layout over here, just this location. And I can use that as a starting point for the entire map. Here's one more example. I can use this as an idea for the entire map. Or maybe I just like this section right here next to the warehouse. I do have a tutorial that goes in further on how to take a single section based on the reference that you found and expand it from there. So you take an image, a reference you found, just like you would when you find something like this inside Google Maps 3D, and you use that reference to play test that area and expand further. Number six is top-down level design layouts. This is probably the most interesting aspect of using Google Maps. When it comes to creating your own level design layouts, it can be difficult to break out of your own head to design something unique and different. I personally find myself going back to some old layouts I've done or to layouts that are based on existing maps. And it's hard to break out of that state to create something unique and different. But with using Google Maps and 2D view, you can create a top-down layout based on a real-world location and it's easier to simplify the layout to your specific game type when you already have something to work with. So when you find something interesting in 3D view, just come over to the bottom right corner and click on 2D. This will give you a top-down, which is essentially going to be a starting point for your top-down layout. This is now far more interesting than anything I could design just straight out of my head. And I could use this as a starting point to design around a specific game type. Here's another example. This area looks very interesting and it could work as a CSGO map. So in order to see the top-down layout better, click on 2D and now I have a good starting point. The layout is far more interesting and has an angle to it means it's not created on the straight lines, on the grid, which is something that most people do when they create their top-down layouts, is they create on the grid. Everything is created as a square, straight lines. And by using Google Maps, it already gives me something far more interesting to create from. Now, the great part about using this top-down layout technique is once you have your top-down layout, you can then go into 3D view and get a better sense of the design of how the architecture and the surrounding area fits this layout. And you can drop down into street view to get more specific game environment R reference. Number seven is using back in time street view option. 
This is the ability to look back into earlier time captured while you are in street view to get a better reference of what the building may have looked like or what the neighborhood looked like before. So what you view now is the latest time captured in street view which happens to be April 2017. And in certain parts you can jump back in time to an earlier time captured. So you can use this drop down menu and see what was captured before. So we have April 2016 and you can click on this image to load that view in. Now we have a few more. So we can continue going back in time until we may find something more interesting than what we saw before. Another example is when you are looking around in 3D view, you'll often see a building that you'll want to drop down to take a closer look into street view. So I'm going to go ahead and drop down and then in street view that building is gone and we can use the back in time feature and load in an early time where that building was there. Here's another example. This gas station looks interesting enough but I would have liked to see it when it was open or had something more to it than what we see here. So I'm gonna use earlier time captured and jump back to see what's available. And actually this one looks a lot more interesting and it would be really cool to create it. And last example is this building on the street corner. And this isn't a very interesting design, but we can jump back to an earlier time and there was a building here before. And this is a far more interesting as a game environment than what is there now. So this time back feature is extremely helpful. Number eight is style and design iterations. When you're creating a game environment, there's always going to be a certain element of changes and iteration that you go through. For example, you might like a different color or a different detail added. Sometimes you'll do this during the concept art stage, but a lot of times you'll do it right inside the game engine by updating the texture or doing a quick paint over. But using the time back feature on certain locations, on certain buildings, Google Maps will give you ideas for different building style changes. So for this building, the street view captured was in May 2017 and I can use the time back feature to get some design and style changes. So in 2015, this building was painted a different color and I can continue jumping back in time to see different color variations. So out of all these options, I can choose which one looks the best and more interesting in terms of color without me having to do anything inside the game engine, in textures, or in concept art. So out of all of these options, I like the latest one. Actually, when it was freshly painted, it looked more vibrant. So I like this option the best. Number nine is collecting and taking screenshots of what you find. So once you found a few locations and few buildings that you really like and you want to pursue them as a project, you should begin collecting reference and saving these images to create from. So you want to go around the building and capture as many screenshots as needed and then save these images into your reference folder of your project. To capture and save the screenshots, I use Snipping Tool. This comes free in Windows 7. I'm not sure if Windows 10 has something similar, if not the same. So once I have this open, click on New and I select an area to save the image. Once I have it, I go to File, Save As, and I save it as a PNG. When I save the image, I try to include the address, so I can always come back to that same location to collect more reference and to help me create the environment. Number 10, the workflow I use. Let me quickly share my workflow of using Google Maps to generate ideas, collect reference, top-down layouts, and how I go through this process. First, I go to google.com slash maps, and I usually have a city in mind, a location that I'm going to explore. In this case, I chose Miami, so I go to Miami, then I switch over to satellite view, and I zoom in to a specific neighborhood, a specific section of the city. Let's go ahead, zoom in down here. I switch over to 3D view, and I begin to zoom in even closer and let the map, the 3D view load in with more detail. Then I begin to fly around and look 
until I find something that piques my interest. It could be a building, a part of the street, a section of the neighborhood, something that gets my attention. So here's an interesting building. At this point, I go ahead and go into street view to see what it actually looks like. Let's go ahead and move a little further so we can see the building better. This is very interesting. I go through maybe different times this was captured. We can go all the way back to 2008 when this building was being built. And I just uh, go through and see which one looks the best to capture a screenshot, to capture my idea. Once I see something I like, I position the camera and use the snipping tool to record the screenshot. Again, I make sure that I get the address so I can come back to it anytime. Once I have it here, I go to File, Save As, and save it as a PNG. Then I zoom back out, go back to 3D view, and continue to look around. If I see an interesting top-down view that I think might work as a layout for a map, I click over to 2D, and again, use the snipping tool to capture the screenshot. Then I save this, and then continue looking around for something else. And last, number 11, be aware of time. It's very easy to get carried away and spend hours, if not days, exploring cities, neighborhoods, locations, buildings, and just keep capturing ideas, but without starting on your project. Because this is very fun, and the possibility of something better around the corner is always there. So a couple of things that will help you stay on track. First is it helps to set a time limit. Give yourself one, two, or three hours to explore a specific city, a specific location. And then once you're done and you've captured your ideas, start on your project. And second, define your focus. Have a specific theme, setting, idea, or location that you're going to explore. Maybe it's a specific type of building or a certain neighborhood or a small part within the city that you're going to focus on and explore because it's easy to get lost going from one neighborhood to another when you're just looking at everything and everything is a possibility. So I hope you found this tutorial very helpful and it helps you to explore different ideas, find better reference and create better game environments and level designs.